Welcome back everyone. So finally, I create this sign in with Google again for you guys because I get a lot of comment. I get a lot of people that send email for me. So this is the final version of what we are going to building in this video, basically. So as you can see, um, oh yeah, I'm going to mention this. If you get warning on a console, that is because this one, when, when we're using set CN and as you can see here, it's going to be fixed with the latest Canary version. So you need to just say npm install next at Canary. It will fix that issue on your console. All right. So now let's take a look what we are going to be building in this video. So as you can see here, we have sign in with Google. When I click that, it will showing you the loading, loading animation, just a little loading animation and the button it should be disabled. And we have the list of the Google account in here. When I click on that, it will redirect me into the admin page. As you can see, welcome back to Dev. All right, really simple. So hopefully you can find this video helpful for you guys. And let's get started. All right, so now when I click this sign in with Google, we get this uh, console here that is because on the source component Google with sign in, we just console lock that down here. Okay. Yeah. So the first thing is we need to just go through the next out documentation and go to providers and go to the where's the Google? Google and the first thing is we need to get the uh this one Google client ID and Google client secret. Uh, or we can just copy this first and go to the lib folder and then out and then we can put that on the provider here just put that like so and also we need to import the google provider we can just copy that and paste that right here just like so oh we have that one here yeah cool and as you can see, TypeScript give us this warning and just TypeScript, TypeScript just say, are you really get this variable here in your environment variable? Just put an explanation here to say, okay, TypeScript, I'm going to put that value. Don't worry. So let's copy this here and go to environment variable. And I'm going to put that in here like so. Just do empty string for now and also the client secret like so and now uh, what we need to do let's go to the configuration here and let's click this console.cloud.google.com so the first thing is what we need to do here is let's create a new project uh, this one create new project and i'm going to give a name let's say next out something like that and just click create i'm going to make it bigger so you can see uh, it's still loading here just wait for that and now we need to select the project and then we need to working with the concept screen i believe it should be right here so let's click on that and see what we have here all right, so in this user type, I'm going to select external because I want to any Google account can access my application. So let's click create. And then for the application name, this is basically what user see when user want to log in in your application. So app name is basically, I'm going to do a uh, next out example app. Like so, it's going to be put that inside this array here and for the support email i'm going to use my email app logo you can put your logo here i'm going to do my logo for the developer email i'm going to use my email let's do that at gmail.com and click save and continue and this scope here i think there's no we need to add in here just save and continue the test user let's say save and continue and back to dashboard okay nice so now let's go to the credential 
and in here we need to create credential and just select this OAuth client ID. When we click that, it should be open the uh, this application type. We need to just select web web application for the name. I'm gonna say uh, let's say my next out app for the authorized redirect URI. We need to put this one here for the production. You need to put your domain. But because we're working with the development, we need to just put this one like so. And for the JavaScript origin, let's just put the uh, local host 3000 here. Yep, let's click create. Okay, so now we get our client ID and client secret. So let's copy that, the client ID, and put that into the environment variable. And also the client secret, let's copy that and put that into the Google client secret variable here. Okay, we successfully get the Google client ID and Google client secret. We need to change our Prisma schema. So let's go to Prisma and Prisma schema. So let's go to the next out documentation and I'm going to go to the, let's see, adapters, I think. Yeah, adapters and then Prisma. And then in here we need to use this uh, example here we need to just copy all of this let's copy all of that copy this and paste that right here and then i'm going to zoom out so you can see and i'm going to comment this model user and i'm going to copy the i think the email username and password or maybe all of this i'm going to copy that go to user this one and I'm going to paste that right here just like so okay so inside the user we have email and I think we need to just remove this email here because this is same with this email down here and for the username I'm going to set that to optional because when we log in with Google we don't have username and for the password when we log in with Google we don't have the password so let's put an optional by put question mark in here created I I think it's fine and also the update at it should be updated at like so it's also fine name email everything here it should be fine okay so now let's go to the super base and as you can see we just have one table in here how to synchronize our prisma schema with our table here it's pretty simple you can see npx prisma db push when we hit enter it should be as you can see it's done and now when we go to our superbase we have this account table session table user and verification token nice as you can see in our out here we get something uh, error going on here this existing user.password is, uh, as you can see, type null is not assignable to type string. Why this is happened? Because on the schema Prisma, we set the password into optional. So in here, this authorize function here, know that maybe sometime this is going to be a null. So it's it's give us this warning. That's the beauty when we're working with type scripts. That's why I love the type script. Okay, so in here we need to check first to just remove this error here. We need to check if the existing user dot password have a value. We need to just run this function here. This await in here. And the error should be gone. But we have that one here. What is this? This error here is because we are returning username here, right? But again, username sometimes is null. Okay, because we set the username into uh, optional in here. So to fix that, we need to go to our types here and just add for the user here, username sometimes is null. When we save that, as you can see, the error is should be gone. So now let's go to Google sign in and in here we need to log in with Google. How do we do that? So let's go to the, uh, let's go back to providers and then Google. 
this one and how do we log in with google we can go to documentation and client api here and just find this sign in method and as you can see in here we can just put directly string google to sign in with google just simple as that so now let's go back into the google sign in button and in here what we need to do is let's just remove this and i'm going to say sign in like so and just put google and in here i'm going to add callback url callback url and i'm going to put the http colon slash slash localhost 3000 and then admin after user successfully login it will redirect user into the admin panel admin page so let's go back and see what we have so i'm going to refresh that first and still compiling down here okay it's done and let's sign in with google i'm gonna click on that and it as you can see now we access the account.google.com and just click whatever the icon you want to log in so i'm gonna log in with my account here i'm gonna click on that and it should be now we log in as you can see we on the admin page and welcome back there's no username here so let's go back to the app dashboard app.dsx and as you can see here this is rendering the session user dot username because we don't have the uh, username we can just put or here and we can say session dot user dot name i think so as you can see now we get our name all right so now let's try to sign out and because i'm a nice person so i'm going to show you how to add the loading okay so now here i'm going to create the state first so let's do state let's say state and then in here i'm going to say is loading like so and for the type here i'm going to say boolean and by default it's going to be false and in here in the top of the children i'm going to put uh, is loading and then here i'm going to say and if the loading is true i'm going to put this svg here and i'm going to add class name hake4 with 4 margin right 2 and animate spin and to see the loading i just want to put the state to true so you can see as you can see look nice and yeah we can just put disable here whatever you want basically so let's do disable disable is true when the is loading is true as you can see nice and yep and here i'm gonna say false and i'm gonna change this to async function like so and just cut this one and i'm gonna use try and catch down here we grab the error and then in this try what i'm gonna do let's set the is loading into true and also down here i'm going to await for sign in google like so and if something wrong happened i'm going to set the is loading back to false and finally i also want to set is loading back to false and basically guys you can put here something like post notification in here to, to tell the user that something wrong happened Okay, so now let's try to refresh and I'm going to sign in with Google. As you can see, we get the loading, right? It's really fast. Let's go back. I'm going to zoom in so you can see. Sign in. Nice. I'm going to select my account here. Now I'm successfully logged in. Yeah, that's it for this video. And hopefully you find this video helpful, guys. And thank you so much for watching. And thank you also for your support for my channel. See you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.